And when you watch what's happening in Gaza, does that make you feel like you could tell something through movies that we're somehow not getting? Most people, this is happening in the abstract. For me, I thought an in was to make something which, was ha which actually happened here, right here in this country. There's evidence of it everywhere. Steve McQueen is a British film director and screenwriter whose film 12 Years a Slave won an Oscar, a BAFTA, and a Golden Globe for Best Film. I'm Christina Lamb and I am the Sunday Times Chief Foreign Correspondent, currently most often to be found in Ukraine or the Middle East. I've spent some 36 years reporting conflicts from around the world and have always been most interested in the human cost and how people live during war, particularly women and children. So I was very interested to interview Steve McQueen about his new film Blitz, which he wrote, produced and directed, and which focuses on the German bombing of London in the Second World War, and one woman and her son caught up in it. There's so much war going on in the world yes. at the moment. I'm a war correspondent, mm. I just came back from Ukraine. But first of all, what made you decide to do a film about war? I mean, aren't people seeing enough war already? Well, in 2003, I um, went to Iraq. I was the war artist. Uh, and there was a tour of duties with the, with the soldiers there. There were people from, you know, Edinburgh, Swansea, Newcastle, Southampton, Hull, you know, Sheffield, Manchester, all over the UK. And there was regional accents. And I was, you know, with these guys having conversations. I, I felt a sense of real sort of nationalism, a real sense of sort of uh, com comradeship. This is the first time I ever had that. And what was interesting about that it was kind of perverse because it was a, in a, a place of war. And it was kind of like, you know, the whole idea of being in theatre, as they say. I mean, <laughs> to be in the war zone and be calling it theatre is kind of a very romantic idea. And I just thought to myself, well, what happens if I was looking at something like this would happen in the UK? Because often how we, majority of us, unlike you, engage with war is through the media. People like yourself reporting back, and I really wanted to get to a certain point where I could bypass that and get into a situation where people could have a, a, a film, a drama. So that's why I decided to make a film about it because I think there was a numbness about war, and I thought to, to bring it home that this happened here in this place could be a, a way in. I was doing research for a film project called Small Axe, and I came across this photograph of this young black child who's, who's about to be evacuated, and I knew as soon as I saw it that was my in to tell the story about war through a child's eyes. I wanted to ask you why you would chosen a mixed race child to focus the film on, because at that time there must be very few. No, God, no. Oh, no, no, you don't know London. At that time, there was a lot of, there was a lot of black children here. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but that's what people, because what you know of England or what you know of Britain during that time through war pictures, is what's been shown. And, and in doing the research, you see a very different London, a very different London. Oh, uh, Britain, I would say, even. Why can't you come with me? Sweetheart, I told you it's an adventure for children only. Grown-ups not allowed. I want to stay with you. The other thing is that most movies we've grown up seeing from the First or Second World War are always about the trenches, the fighting. Mm, mm. And so you've chosen to do something very different, telling it through yes, a that was and yes, a child. Yes, that was a choice too, because half of the war effort was happening here in the UK. Women were the sort of um, emotional and physical backbone of the country. I mean, you know, they're, they're dealing with their elderly parents. They're taking the children off to be evacuated. They're work, working in ammunition factories and aircraft hangars to support the front. And again, they're holding the country together you know, in, in, a, in a real way. I so feel really hard. strongly about mm. that in reporting war because mm -hmm. it seems to me that women are actually the real heroes of the war. Absolutely. And unfortunately, what we see a lot in, in, in war pictures are, excuse, forgive me for being bold and direct, but women being mattresses or girlfriends or hysterical women or wives or people handing someone a cup of tea when really they were holding shit together. You know, they had to because when the guys came home with it, this sort of PSD, it, you know, they're the, they're the ones who are holding the stuff down. You know, they're the unsung heroes, and I just wanted to put them in, into the foreground, for sure. It's interesting because uh, I was also in Iraq during the mm -hmm. war, and during the, the first part of the war, when Saddam was toppled, so I was there for a few months and I came back, and out of interest, because that was sort of before internet, mm -hmm. and being able to see reporting when you're away, when I came back, I looked at all the reports that 
um, had been run in British papers while I was away. And the only mention of women was as widows or kind of grieving yeah. over mm. losses. And it was almost as if they weren't part of the country. They were sort of just mm. um, bypassed. So it feels very important always, I think, to show that side. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 it's. it's is deafening. It's blinding. It's kind of, the, you know, it was. It's, it, it has been a choice to portray war like that. It's been a choice. Why I don't know, but it's been a choice. I was interested that you particularly chose to focus on the Blitz, and again, it sort of felt very relevant seeing all the people going into the tube stations yes. because in Ukraine we exactly. had exactly that: the air raid sirens going off, people mm -hmm. in Kiev going into metro stations, people in Kharkiv literally living underground. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, it's interesting because the, the narrative is that you know Churchill didn't want people to be in. You know, it's sheltering in the underground. I mean, he apparently said that he didn't want people to cower, so he blocked. You weren't allowed to go in, 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 in the subway stations. What happened? Actually, happened was people who were fighting. You know, uh, you know, Franco. Uh, uh, you know, in Spain, in the British sort of socialists went out there, and they knew about hiding in subways in Madrid. So they came back and wanted to do the same thing. And you know, people fought their way into this in, in, into tube stations and shelters. So this idea that it was okay, people being cozy and you know, being allowed in. No, no, no. People fought their way in to the railway stations and then they had to open up because there wasn't enough shelters. And we, we hear a lot about the Blitz spirit. Is that a thing, do you think, or do we mythologise that? Well, I think partly, but, you know, there obviously some of it was, obviously was, was true. I mean, again, I think that the camaraderie, things happen in war. I mean, you know more than me, obviously, because I imagine people think they're going to die. So... There's a camaraderie, ship, there's a com comradeship that that, that 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 sort of develops. I'm I'm, you know, I'm sure. But you don't shy away either from the bad stuff that happened, the the looting, the the sort of fake. Well, that's part characters. of war. It's it's it's, it's 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 poverty. It's necessity and criminality. It's it's part of war. Part what what we do, what anyone would do, in a certain circumstance. You know, one can't judge people in a certain sense of where they feel they have to do things which are not particularly. Can I say uh, ethical to survive? I mean, that's what unfortunately what what what, what happens, and uh, you have to show the good as well as the bad. One of the things I also found really inspiring watching the film was Rita and the factory workers, and seeing that side of of the women still trying to keep things going, but also trying to go out in the evening and have mm. a good time. I think sometimes we forget when we think a war's going on and everyone's just involved in the fighting, but actually people are still trying to. And, you know, again, it's like Prince, you know, the, you know, party like it's 1999. I mean, <laughs> Armageddon might be coming, but somehow we humans have a way of sort of just making something out of something. What seems to be the problem here? This gentleman has put up this sheet to contain us, to put us in a prison within a prison. I have no interest in looking at him, but I do not want to be concealed. <laughs> this is exactly what Hitler is doing. We are in a situation of war. I like to think that we step up to the occasion and see our fellow human beings as equals, and that we treat each other with compassion respect. And the scenes with the racism mm. in the shelters, mm. which is very shocking, was that based on actual account? That's the basis of all the wars that we're talking about, racism. I mean, that's, what that, that, that's the base of all the wars, in fact. So therefore, Blitz just highlights that in, in, in a way which is sort of um, uh, unfortunately very current. I never felt so useful as an artist right now because I feel that the, 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 you know, you know, Blitz is kind of very urgent, very urgent indeed. And when you watch on TV, I don't know if you do watch, but like the footage of what's happening in Gaza today and in Lebanon, um, does that make you feel like you could tell something through movies that we're somehow not getting? Because it, it just worries me that... We see all these terrible things all the time and nobody's really doing anything about it anymore. They're just saying... Most people, this is happening in the abstract. It's not happening in a way of something they know. It's sort of some distant sort of 
foreign country somewhere where something's happening somewhere. For me, I thought an in was to make something which, was ha which actually happened here, right here, in this country. There's evidence of it everywhere. And to sort of say, okay, this didn't happen in some far-off distant country, this happened here, deal with it. And therefore, somehow to engage them through drama could wake people up, because we all we'll have armor. And just how can you penetrate that? You penetrate that through emotion, you penetrate that through a family, penetrate that through love. I feel that that can actually have some kind of awakening, possibly, within the audiences. It's a way in, again, to grab people's attention, to sort of to, to, to refocus their gaze through a child's eyes looking at war. I didn't want to spend my money on, on explosions. I wanted to spend my money on the aftermath, the psychological aftermath of what was happening, which was the, the, the real terror. More than anything else, you know that more than anyone else. The psychological terror of what happens after the explosions and how people have to deal with it, and also, you know, what the, what a child has to sort of really to reap from that from from that narrative. So again, if they want to sort of you know the, the, all the sort of you know the blood and guts or whatever, you could put the TV on. But I'm interested in the, is the aftermath and how that sort of affects people for for generations. I was thinking about you this morning because I was listening to the Today program and there was somebody talking about the fact that only half the number of people that took GCSEs in art in 2010 are now doing it. It's just fallen so dramatically. And you've talked about how art was your salvation as a child. And I wonder how you feel that the number of children doing art has gone down so much. You know, I, I would have never been an artist if I had to pay to go to university. That, that, that wouldn't have been a, a, a possibility. It's gone down because people, they see a fee and they see art, they don't think anything of it. But, you know, how, you know, art plays an important part within, you know, physics, within, 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 within being an inventor, within mathematics, to play, to sort of, uh, to, to realize things to, uh, in a different way, to imagine things differently. Again, it's not just a rule book, it's about how you are, can be inventive and, and play and art is hugely important. So I hope that the government will, will invest in that because it's, it's not just about people becoming artists or, or whatever you want to call it, whatever they do in, in, in the artistic world. It's about our sciences. It's about being us in a situation where, you know, like Scandinavian countries, they're investing in it because they understand how you think differently is how you get ahead. So what next for you? Uh, what, what next for me is to sort of, uh, well, it's, it's to sort of... Um, Take a break, I think. <laughs> How do you relax? Hoovering. Hoovering? I, yeah. I like Hoover. Am I? And what kind of movies do you like watching? Romantic comedies. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'll ever make a romantic comedy? No. Nope. <laughs>